Well, his name is uh, Voigt. Uh, he's a billionaire who, for all of his life, he was uh, searching for something uh, more. He's very uh, ungrateful character. He's the guy who was never happy with no matter how much he had, he was always searching for some new uh, experience, for some new uh, feeling, uh, but talking more about the sexual and more like uh, bodily experiences. And he feels tired of everything. He feels like that he needs something more. And that's when in his life he comes across uh, somebody's research about the box and he finds the box and he believes that this is the ultimate holy grail of of uh, otherworldly experiences it's something that that he can actually renew himself and do something that nobody have ever done before him and of course he doesn't know what's he getting himself into and he really ends up having a bad end of the deal and then we catch him uh in kind of like the movie starts kind of really uh heating up when we realize that uh he is trying to open the box again because he's trying to get outside of this predicament that he is in so he's basically is going to commit the same mistake but hoping for the better results he's trying to outsmart these cenobites and he builds this mansion and everything around it he builds the cage for them but is it going to be successful or not we'll see that uh in the movie well honestly i've never been a huge fan of horror movies but uh when, when i was younger when i was a teenager my local video store you know there was still vhs tapes we found this treasure trove of uh, hellraiser and i went in the one that was i believe it was the fourth one when half the story is actually happening in space that's why i originally took it from the shelf because i thought it was a science fiction and then i saw the one and then i realized this is franchise you know they actually have three already made and that's how i saw the one two and three and uh what really attracted me to uh, David's film when we've been discussing, David was mentioning that we're going to be kind of like making almost a little homage to the original one, to the first one. There's not going to be a lot of computer animation, CGI. We're going to try to do as much as possible uh, with practical elements, you know, with uh, when we have chains flying, you know, they're not CGI chains. They're actually real chains. When you see Cenobites and everything on them, they're not uh, lenses are in people's eyes and the costumes and all, all those prosthetics and stuff. So it looks so realistic for actors while on set and also your eye when you see when you see it in the movie you realize and you recognize that it's it's a real thing there is very very small amounts of cgi and uh i, I love that it reminded it's going to remind you on that original old movie when they did that kind of uh visual effects uh a lot of what he um, said working with david was when you come on the set, when you talk to the guy, you you realize he's prepared. He knows what he's doing. And it's always for an actor, it's a good sign because you it's a lot about trusting the director, trusting his vision. Because if you can't, if he's asking you to do something that in the moment you think it might be ridiculous, it might be too much, you need to rely on him that he's not going to embarrass you, that you're going to actually, that this part that maybe is not good, but it's good for the uh, for the other part of the scene, that he's going to cut it out and he's going to not let you expose there like a raw nerve. And that was that was the case with David. You know, he, you, you, you were just able to trust him. And now when I saw the film, it was exactly what we've been talking about, what we've been discussing. And uh, he just he just has this calm presence on set that creates beautiful work environment. But in the same time, he's a nerve. He's kind of like, you know, he's pushing everybody to give everything from themselves. And uh, it's actually a perfect work environment. So I, I was I was very, very happy to work with him.